All right, everybody. Good morning. It is that time again. We've got another Seattle Mariners check-in to do. They are 60 games into their season, so 102 games left. Um, the baseball reference page has not yet updated for yesterday's game, which kind of sucks for them because yesterday's game was really, really good. Uh, Crawford Grand Slam, Julio three hits, Bliss first career hit, and he stole two bases. Uh Rally home run. By the way, some people are saying I'm mispronouncing uh, Luke Rally's name. So if somebody could down below tell me how it's supposed to go, I'd appreciate that. But uh, yeah, really good game. So that hasn't been put on this page yet. But regardless, the team is 33 and 27 and starting to put some distance between them and the rest of the AL West, which is great because it doesn't really feel like they're playing as good as they can yet. In fact, I would argue they're not even that close to how good they can play yet. They are a long way away from that. And I mean that in most regards because they are terrible offensively through 60 games, like one of the worst teams in the league in terms of what they do at the plate. Their starting pitching has been good, maybe even really good, but not hyper elite and the bullpen has been it's been kind of difficult to find the right guys so sitting here with 33 wins in 60 games is remarkable and awesome and I'm feeling really good about it because it's hard for me to believe this team will get will play worse from here on out now they could have worse results but in terms of the way the team is playing I feel like it's got to get better from here. I would be really surprised if it didn't because it feels like they're leaving so much on the bone. Now, something very significant happened uh, a couple of days ago when they fired their uh, one of their coaches. Uh, coach, he wasn't the hitting coach, but he was associated with the offense, uh, Brant Brown. Uh, they let him go after bringing him on in the offseason, so... Obviously, that hire did not work at all because the offense has gotten worse since he showed up. By the way, sorry if the frames are a little bit low right now. I don't know what's going on, but um, usually I'm getting a few more frames per second than this. It's like 19 right now, it looks like. So sorry if it's a little bit off, but it doesn't really matter for this video. So since he's been let go, the offense has had two good games. So we'll see if that holds. But um, I mean, it's not like it can get worse. So it can't be a bad decision and we'll see what happens. To speak about just the last 10 games in isolation, um, it was uh, interesting because I made that video a, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and I was kind of talking up the offense. I was like, okay, I think this offense is about to get going here. I think this offense is about to turn it around. I think we're about to see better results. And then they had... Some really bad games against the Yankees. They had bad results against the Nats. They were really bad against Houston and still won three out of four, which should tell you something. And then they fire Brant Brown, which I'm, I'm going to cling on to that for a little bit, I guess. I guess I'm just going to have to cling on to that because if I don't cling on to that, it, it's tough right now. It is tough because this team... Um, until further notice, has shown the ability to just absolutely no-show offensively against anybody. Like, they were facing the worst pitcher that the Houston Astros have a few days ago with an opportunity to sweep Houston. And they completely no-showed offensively in that game. They had got, they got to Verlander better than they were able to get to, uh, what's his name, Allegretti? I think his name is Allegretti. Um, they were able to get to Verlander better than they got to him. They were able to get the bullpen in the previous games much better than they did in that game. It was a reminder of how far we still have to go, that the offense could no-show that game. That was tough. That was um, not fun. A not fun reminder of what this team is capable of doing in the negative direction. So... To look at things collectively, well, first of all, the vibes right now are good. They took three out of four against Houston, which they absolutely positively did not deserve to, right? Like the way they played in that series, they 
really shouldn't have won more than one game, but somehow the offense does nothing, still finds a crazy way to peel off three. And then we've got this Angel series that has gotten off to a good start so far, and the offense is starting to show signs of life. So the vibes are pretty good right now. We're starting to see a little bit of rhythm in the bullpen, although it's still thin. The starting pitching is really, really good right now. Also, it's starting to look even better than it's been over the course of the season, I feel. But it, it's still, it's still kind of tough to really figure out what the overall vibe is right now, especially on this offense, because you look at it and the guys who are playing well are cooling off very quickly and they need to be replaced. Hal cooled off. He's just a, in terms of ops plus and I think WRC, like a average hitter right now, right? Uh, Rojas, obviously he, now he was always going to cool off because he was playing so good to start the season. It was unsustainable. Uh, Rally, Luke Rally has uh, cooled off, but again, we don't, it feels like we still don't play him enough. I feel like he'd get into a rhythm if we played him more. And uh, Dylan Moore, who was playing like an absolute monster for a little bit there, has cooled off as well. Now, it's starting to feel like things are going to go back to the way we were expecting them to be, for the most part, because Crawford has heated up since he got back from the injury. He's very close to being like a league average hitter on the um, on the season now, and he should be able to settle into being an above average hitter for the rest of the year. Julio's really heated up. He's still got a ways to go to even be average on the whole so far this year, but he is getting there. And he's played really well over the last week or so. Um, France, back from the dead. I don't know where this came from, but absolutely back from the dead. I'm scared to believe in it. I really don't want to bite onto it too hard, but he looks good. So we're starting to see things that we expect from the usual suspects. And we're starting to see some expected regression. Like Hanniger has been really, really rough lately in the field and at the plate. And it's very frustrating for me there because it's so obvious what's going to happen to Hanniger. He's old. He's too old to be playing this much and we keep doing it so that's very frustrating to watch him and he's in the lineup almost every game I think he's gotten like four games off this season and look, look at look at what you've got look at the results here you've got a player who is well below average maybe even bad at the plate and he's one of the worst outfielders in baseball this should not surprise you so that's very frustrating but it's not unexpected. Hanzone has regressed since he got back from the injury. He's now firmly in that below average territory, and he's been a mess since coming back, really. I think in May, his WRC was like 48 or something like that. And um, that that's really the main stuff, right? Like you've got Garver still. I, I don't know what to say about Garver. Watching him at the plate right now, he looks lost against Major League pitching, which we know he shouldn't be. He's 33, and he had a good season last year. He's had good seasons before, so for him to be bad is one thing. Like, that would be just kind of like, oh, whatever, that happens. But he looks lost. Like, he he looks like a double-A player who got thrown in against the big guys. Um, I don't know when Polanco's coming back, and I don't know what to think about that anymore either. Like, he's been about as bad as Garver. Um probably a little bit more valuable because of what he does in the field, but it's not like he's been that good in the field so far either. So, I mean, it, it's still, it's still a little bit of a leaky boat. It's a leakier boat than I would like. And we're going to have to find something here because Dylan Moore, he should not be playing as much as he's playing right now. I know we had to ride the hot hand and we did that very well, but the hot hand has uh, cooled off significantly and we're going to need something really good from somebody else. We're going to need somebody like Garver to get hot, or whenever Polanco gets back, he needs to get hot. Cal needs to heat back up. He probably will. He's always going to be a little inconsistent. By the way, Cal's playing too much as well. Just putting that out there. Cal's probably playing too much, which is part of the reason why he's cooled off. So it's still a little bit of a leaky boat, and I've really 
lost faith in Garver or Polanco. Like, I'm not saying it can't happen, but it's hard for me to imagine it happening. Because he Garver in particular just looks so, so beat down at the plate right now. It, it's hard for me to imagine a good outcome whenever he's up there. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm going to keep an open mind here. I'm going to keep an open mind because since I'm, it's a tiny sample size, but maybe Brant Brown was telling them to do something that really, really wasn't working. It's possible. Other than that, I mean, the pitching has been really good over the last uh, 10 days and it's been good overall over the course of the season. I will say that, um, there's been a real lack of elite pitching from our crew of starters, right? Like Gilbert's on the whole probably been, I, I don't know if he's been the best, but it kind of feels like he's been our best starting pitcher. And he's been, you know, above average to good collectively. Castillo, Castillo is the guy who you're really looking at right now because he played so badly to start the season that the fact that he's already managed to catch up the way that he has Getting his ERA down sub 3.3 is a really good sign because he was way, way, way behind the eight ball after the first month of the season. But collectively, he's been above average to good. Bryce Miller collectively has been above average to good, although he might get boosted up a little bit after yesterday's game when he was really, really special. Kirby's been honestly below average. Um, I, 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 we were talking about this in the chat the other day. I feel like his obsession with never walking anybody has been detrimental because it allows him to give up home runs. So I think he needs to pull that urge to never walk anybody back a little bit. Sometimes it's okay to risk it. And I think he'll be a better pitcher if he starts to accept that. And now Wu's been phenomenal. Wu has been mind-blowingly good, but it's a small sample size. But overall, you look at this rotation and you're like, I would have expected one of those top three guys to just be smoking fools on the way to like a Cy Young almost. And we haven't seen that yet. The only guy in this rotation that's pitching like he's due for a Cy Young is Wu. And that's five starts. So we can't, we can't go too much on that, but feels like there's something on tap there. The rotation has been really good. Feels like they could kick it up a notch very easily and be great. Maybe Wu regresses a little bit. Uh, well, Wu will regress because he's been invincible so far, but it feels like Castillo could get better. Feels like Kirby could definitely get better. Feels like Gilbert could maybe get a little bit better. So I'm excited to see where that goes. And the pen. Spear's going to be out for a little while. So we're basically rocking with Munoz as the closer. Stanek has become the eighth inning guy, and he's been awesome. I want to say that. Like, since he found his splitter, he's been pretty much nails. He gave up the home run to the guy on the Nats, whose name, oh, Abrams. Other than that, he's been nails lately. And even the home run he gave up to Abrams was a pretty good pitch. That is not something I'm holding against Stanek. But Stanek has been great, and he's probably going to be like your eighth inning guy going forward. And then I guess you got Saucedo, who's been good this year. Been pretty good since coming back from the injury. And I guess that's serviceable. But past that, it's like Thornton. Um, not really feeling great about him right now. You've got Voth. Spear, by the way, has not been good, even if he was healthy. Like, he's been... It's been a bumpy road for Spear. And then it's like, okay, do you like Tyson Miller? I mean, he's been okay. He's been pretty good over a small sample size, I guess. Kirby Sneed, the numbers aren't bad, but no. So right now it's Bauman, right? The guy you got from the, um, the uh, what was it, the Cubs. It's Bauman would be the guy that you hope becomes like that fourth reliever that you can lean on for marginally important situations so you don't have to have Saucedo, Stanek, and Munoz pitch every single game where you're winning or tied or whatever, but it, it still feels thin. Spear needs to come back. 
that's really what I can say about that. This all hinges on Spear, I feel like. If Spear gets back to form, Gabe Spear, then everything's going to be okay. You've got Munoz to close, you've got Stanek to handle the 8th inning, and then you've got Spear to handle the 7th, Spire, I, I, I don't know how to pronounce that one either, but you can get him to handle the 7th inning, then you just need 6 from your starters, and then you've got a guy like Saucedo who can handle some situational bullpen medium leverage situations, and then you've got guys like Voth and Thornton and Sneed to handle the low leverage situations. It works. You can even give Stanek a couple of ninth innings every now and then to give Munoz a rest. So that's the key because I feel like we already blew our load with the Bauman trade. And while Bauman has been, well, we've only seen him twice, so I'm not even going to pretend like I know what's going on there. But it, it doesn't feel like we're going to get a super high leverage guy out of, out of him. It doesn't feel like we're going to be putting him in high leverage situations and feeling good about it. So that part is going to be rough until Spear gets back and until we see him actually pitching well. I guess Saucedo will serve for now. It's he's he's been fairly good so far this year, but it it's it, it would really really be tragic if this season got derailed in any way by the bullpen because the bullpen has been the strength of this team and the strength of this front office for a while. So if this bullpen ends up disrupting things because so far I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to find games this year where the Mariners bullpen has actually blown it like maybe that game our first game of the year against Houston maybe that game I think the bullpen blew it but in terms of actually costing us a game they haven't really done it much yet but they've well okay okay the one where Munoz walked the bases loaded and then walked in the winning run I guess other than that, this pen, it hasn't done anything disastrous yet overall, I feel like. We've managed to survive it, but hopefully we can start doing better than surviving soon. All right, see you guys later. Go Mariners. Um, it's, it's been a pretty, it, it's been a pretty fun ride. I would have loved to have taken one more off the Nationals. They're not a very good team. Should have been able to do a little more against them than what we did. But this June, the schedule's not bad, right? We're getting a day off uh, tomorrow, which we haven't had in forever, which is huge. And we have a chance to pile up some wins over the next week or so. And over the rest of the season, really, the schedule's not bad. All right. See you guys later. Go Mariners.